Hello, I am Matt Williamson. How's everyone doing today? I am great. Thanks for asking. Um, we are here today to just break down things to look for in preseason number two, Buffalo at Pittsburgh. I think we got to start with Russell Wilson. I've been very impressed with him in camp. Very sharp. All the things I've told you, very professional. But he is going to start this game, and I'm hoping everything I've been telling you about camp, you see Saturday night. You know, I'm basically in a nutshell. I mean, pay attention to how well he gets him in and out of the huddle, gets the plays, how crisp he is, you know, the tempo he plays with, understanding of his environment, you know, looking, uh, getting getting the ball out, knowing where the ball's going to go even before the snap, you know, coming up to the line of scrimmage, reading the blitz, boom, I'm going to go right here with the hot route, you know, that type of stuff, and how he not only communicates with the sidelines, but his teammates too, gets them all aligned, that kind of stuff. So, the Bills basically live in their nickel package. More so than any defense in the league. It's just a McDermott thing, even with this terrible Milano injury. So I'm real curious. How do the Steelers, I know they're not game planning heavy for this, but how do they attack nickel? So my thoughts are, if you come out with two tights, Fryermuth and Washington, two receivers, Pickens and Jefferson most likely, that you're probably going to get nickel and you should have a lot of success running it. Now, what if you replace Washington with Hayward or go three wide and take Washington off the field and you still get nickel? You should have success throwing it. You know, their safeties and linebackers right now are really in flux. So I'm just curious about that. I mean, I just want you to be aware that the majority of the snaps the Steelers take on offense, and maybe it's, maybe the Bills will change it up, but, I mean, we're previewing, I'm not reviewing, are going to be against a nickel package. Along those lines, considering what the state of the linebackers and safeties are in Buffalo right now, and Wilson's troubles in this area, how and how well do they attack the middle of the field in the passing game? And that goes for Fields and Wilson, but I want to see throws over the middle, in breaking routes, seam routes out of the slot, you know, pickings over the middle, that type of thing. So I'm real curious about that. I think that's something you should look at as well. Um, another thing that's really interesting to me is this will be the first healthy game for Corderell Patterson. Does he play much? Do they have a package for him? Do they just find ways to get balls in, ball in his hands? Yeah, he scored on an end around and seven shots the other day. Might you see something like that? Will he line up as a traditional wide out and run wide receiver routes? Will he only play running back? Will he be on kickoff return? We have not seen that yet. Also interesting to me. I also think that there is more to be determined for the best of the rest running backs, not Patterson, Warren, or Najee. You know, I think that competition is going to be fierce, battling like four dogs, one bone type of situation there. So keep an eye on that. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is the world's most trusted betting platform for your number one source for everything football. From the preseason NFL to college kicking off, Bet Online is every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads when the games are being played. If you think you know your stuff, get in on our winner take all. 300,000 NFL survivor pool for the upcoming season. When the game's over, head over to our online casino and get in on the in a game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of our over 150 slot games. Head to the website today and use promo code BLEAV, capital B L E A V, and get in on the action. Bet online. The game starts here. All right. I mentioned Pickens and Jefferson. I think they're the top two in the receiver pecking order. No Brian Nayuk as we speak, obviously. Do the other guys continue to step up? Can a guy like Watkins rebound from a terrible punt return day and say, hey, you guys could really use me on offense? You know, like, who else steps up in that wide receiver room? Austin continue to be productive. We'll see. You know, Miller, can he build on a, a good performance last week? Maybe the biggest thing to talk about here, or one of, Zach Frazier. You know, does he st 
start? Does he play the most snaps? Does he look like he's in charge of the line calls? Does he play a good game? I have very high hopes for Zach Frazier in this game, and I'm expecting him to pass all those tests. Should have probably mentioned this with the quarterbacks, but I'm hoping we see noticeably less of Allen in this game. I'm sure he'll play some. Uh, more fields than Allen would be great, in addition to Wilson. So, I, 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 Allen's fine. I've just seen enough. You know, I mean, I, I kind of feel like you're wasting reps if Allen is playing a, a heavy workload like you did in week one. Back to the Frazier O-line situation. Uh, we got an injury here to one of them, but all in all, I do think the Steelers' O-line is very deep. I talked about this a lot last week, and it came to fruition as the second half came, you know, first series of the second half, that I expect the Steelers' number two O-line to have success in all preseason games. That being said, the Bills' defensive line is pretty good. It's the strength of their defense now, but it's also deep. They have a lot of high picks and big investments on their defensive line. It's a four-man front. So that won't be an easy test. I'm excited to watch the trench battle quite a bit. I wish I knew this answer when I was recording this, but is Cam Hayward going to play? I feel like I have no Cam Hayward answers whatsoever. You know, I've watched him at camp here and there, but I'm not gleaning a ton from that. He sat out plenty up there as well. Is he back to being a dominant player? I have a feeling we're not going to know this until the regular season, but just putting it out there that I think he's as pivotal a guy on this defense as there is, because if he's back to being the 10th best defensive lineman in the league, this front seven will be great. If he's not a liability, but if he's not what we're used to, then you got to go you know, go looking. Um, along those lines, this should be Lowry's first game with the Steelers. Curious how he plays, what he looks like, a little bit more how they deploy him. And can DeMarvin Leal keep making plays, keep showing up? You know, he's a different style D lineman than the rest of them. They ever line him up on the edge? Speaking of which, who who's going to you know step up as that fourth edge player? Is it Moon? Kyron Johnson? Guy I've been, you know, pumping up a little bit as, as, long, as well as Windman, who also will play off the ball, I would imagine. So Windman and Johnson are two guys I think are really interesting for special teams. Moon has ability. Is Leal going to do more of it? So keep an eye on that. I'm really worried about this nickel situation for the Steelers. And if I were in the Bills' shoes, they have Shakir, they have Curtis Samuel, and they have their first pick, Keon Coleman. All of whom I personally think might be best in the slot. But they're going to have those dudes playing outside and slot. I mean, so along with Kincaid, who's really a glorified slot receiver, a tight end. So this should be a really difficult test for any slot corners. And the Steelers are pretty bad there right now. So is a nickel corner going to get greatly exposed? Along those lines, assuming Minka plays, I'm, I'm assuming these guys will because Wilson is too, will we see some big nickel with three safeties and have one of those guys do some slot stuff as well? Because we saw that early in camp. I haven't seen as much about it lately. Flat out, does Josh Allen, I'm assuming he's playing again. I mean, he played two days ago in the, in the, in the practice, and he played in week one. But he's unbelievably good. Does he torture this secondary is really my question. Otherwise, you're going to see Mitch, and Mitch is, I think you know what you're going to see with Mitch. But does a good quarterback rip the secondary up is a question I have, I guess, across the board. Okay, some two more special teams nuggets here. It's kind of like the slot corner, and it goes hand in hand. Gunners. Who are the gunners? I mean, I'm starting to hope, pray that Rush and Watts are able to really step up and be those guys. So keep an eye on those two in particular. Keep an eye on who the first team punt gunners are. They were really, really bad last year or last week. And I think they're just lacking true NFL gunners as we speak. And you would think that's something, oh, we'll just, you know, coach them up. It's not as easy as you think. I mean, you got to run down against two dudes beating the crap out of you, break down in space, make a tackle. I mean, 
It's not a natural thing. So the gunner situation is really concerning to me. I've been meaning to bring this up, and I'm kind of infatuated with it. So I think by now you guys all realize the new kickoff rules. You have to kick the ball between the goal line and the 20. Well, right, the second, I mean, Bosworth's done very little here. Not that it's any concern whatsoever, but he's hasn't swung his leg all that much in camp, especially in any kind of meaningful situation. But Wright has this helicopter-like kickoff that I'm really infatuated with. It's kind of like a low-line drive. Not like it's, you know, three feet off the air, but, I mean, it's not a big arcing kick. And he kicks it so that it spins like a helicopter or a boomerang. So the tip of the ball is constantly, like, flying around. You know what I mean? And it's really hard to field. Now... I don't know if Boz can do this or not because I've never seen him try, but I think it's a really exciting way to maybe kick off because it's somewhat of a low line drive. It's coming at you pretty hot and it's not an easy ball to field because you might get the point. You might get the bulk of it. You might get somewhere in between. So keep an eye on that. And I wonder if Boz has that club in his bag too. Last thing is a Tomlin quote, which I think almost goes without saying. He said the other day, We are looking for more cleanliness. I think that's enough said. You know what I mean? I don't want to see botched punts, returns. I don't need to see botched center quarterback exchange stuff. More cleanliness has to be the expectation at this point, not just, oh, that'd be nice. I mean, no, that needs to be the expectation at this point. We're in the middle of August. So there you have it. A lot to watch. I am psyched about the Bills game. I will be on the pregame show an hour before kickoff, just for like 15 minutes. Tune in. Uh, The whole pregame show is good. And then I will be doing the entire postgame show once again with Mike Pursuta. Give us a call if you'd like. Uh, We've been fielding calls left and right. That's been fun. And that goes for two hours after Mike Tomlin's press conference. So to the wee hours of the night. All right. Take care. Next time you'll hear from me, we will have another game in place, and I'll be reacting to that. Thanks.